gorgeous. You a good puppy? You a good puppy? You are, aren't you? So this is Norton. He's very cute, which has kept him alive. He's a little Frenchy bulldog puppy. Um, he's 13 weeks old. So he went to his regular vet about three weeks ago because he couldn't keep any food down. He kept bringing it up, which is why he's so thin and really underweight. Um, and now has a feeding tube because that's the only way we're keeping food down. Um, so he's had a CT scan, which showed a problem where his blood vessels are not on the right side in his chest. So they're all on the right side instead of the left side. Um, and because of that, there's a ring formed around his esophagus, like a rubber band. So basically he's got like a constriction, a rubber band around his esophagus, just where his heart is. So all the food gets stuck there. So he's got this very big dilated balloon of an esophagus in front of that, which is why he keeps bringing up all his um, saliva and food, um, water and so on. Uh, and he can't get through, it's just stuck. So he's basically starving to death. Um, so what we're going to do is try and break down that rubber band so he has um, a wider diameter to get the food through. Now, that'll work, but we can't predict what will happen with that big bulging esophagus in front. We have to hope that that gradually, as he gets bigger, that doesn't get bigger and it comes becomes more normal size. Um, because he's young, we have a better chance of helping it before it's kind of permanently damaged. But, um, but it's an issue and we can't promise that he's going to be all right, but we're going to give it a good go, aren't we? We're going to make you better. So we're doing that today. So that involves us opening his chest. We're going to do a full kind of open chest, um, move the lungs out of the way, find the abnormal kind of ring that we have to break down and deal with that and hopefully give him a new lease on life. Close his <laughs> Our biggest issue with anaesthetising him is he has a big pocket of the esophagus that's full of fluid, saliva or whatever, um, that's really at risk of kind of coming up when we, as soon as we anaesthetise him. And then if he breathes it in during that process, he'll get really sick with pneumonia or die. So we have to get control of his airway really quickly. So we need to induce him, intubate him and get him on. I'll keep him upright as well the whole time. So we'll do that. And then hopefully once we've got the cuff in, even if he does bring food up, we can suction him. Yep. Um, during surgery, I'm going to have to put a stomach tube down there because I want to pass it through where I break down the, the narrowing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we need to do all of that when we're in there. Let's get him anaesthetised first. So I'm doing a left fourth intercostal thoracotomy. So we're clipping him on the left side. One, two, three, four. So in surgery, it's important to count the ribs because we're making a fourth intercostal space entry into the chest on the left-hand side. That's the same way we would go if we were doing a patent ductus arteriosus because actually we're going for the same structure. It's just a ligament in this case, not a duct. Uh, so you can see counting backwards and forwards so we can make sure we get to the fourth intercostal space and so we make an incision no through the skin. In this little puppy there's not much but some of the sub -Q and okay. the muscles that are over the chest. So the lung is here. This is the abnormal esophagus. All of this is dilated esophagus and that's the lung that we're going to pack out. So I've got one swab back here, okay. Packing that lung back. There's the bulging esophagus, yeah. and this is the ligament that's causing the band around it. Can you see it's kind of like a rubber band around the neck of it? And I'm just underneath it. It's coming off the pulmonary artery is here. You can see heart beating below, pulmonary vessel here, and that's the ligament that was a patent ductus when, the, when it was in utero and then did what it was meant to do and form a ligament, but it just happens to be because all the vessels on the, are on the wrong side of the heart, it formed a band. So that's what we've got to separate out. Uh, can I have, have we got some um, silk suture? Uh, have we got 2O or 3O? So I'm using silk, like it's a, it's a ligament. It shouldn't be a problem to cut it, but if there's any like it used to be a used to be a vessel, so technically you should just be cautious with that. Um, so I'm going to ligate it. I'm using silk, which is what we often use. We use for tying PDAs and so on, because it causes irritation. Silk's actually quite an irritating suture, um, so it will help to add to the fibrosis 
Thank you. <laughs> so I'm just trying to tease out kind of the pulmonary artery from it so I don't kind of catch that in there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to tie this side. <laughs> Three way taps there. Okay. So you've got a chest drain in here, so that's going to drain any excess air or fluid from there. Um, and we've run it underneath the skin and the muscle and then in just behind where our hole is. We've got it connected to a three-way tap so we can drain that later. Okay, and we'll turn it off for now, but we'll come back to that. Uh, so we're watching this lung. See how I've packed it off? It's atelectic, so the when it's dark red, it's not got the air in it. When it's got air in it, you can see it going the light colour. So we're just letting it expand a little bit. Casey's helping us with a little bit of extra pressure. You see how it comes back? Nice. Beautiful. Happy lung. Okay. It's I'm going to pre-place all the sutures in the chest wall so that we can tie them all once they're prepped. It's much easier to place them before you tie them. Now, the biggest risk is when you're pacing the needle through that you don't want to hit the lung because then you'll damage the lung. So I'm actually going in back to front. It's not because I've got my needle on the wrong way. It's because I actually deliberately am doing that. And I'm pushing it through with my finger kind of inside, but that's less likely to grab the lung. And then we come up the other side the right way. And we pre-placing these as well. Can I have some 3O bison, 4O bison and 4O daclon, please? So again, I'm putting this in back to front with my finger below to protect the lung. Remembering the vessels, which side of the ribs are the vessels, just behind or just in front? Okay. The vessels and nerves that run down next to the, each rib. Do you remember which side of the rib they're running, uh, which side they're closest to? Yeah, so they're the closest to quarterly, so you have to try and keep that in mind when you're placing the sutures. Uh, almost there. So now they're all placed, it's much easier to sew them up. Um, so when I get to kind of the last one, when it's pulled almost closed, I need you to start evacuating the chest because I think we'll have a pretty good seal pretty quick. So you can be ready to do that. That'll be good. It's not sealed yet, but it will be soon. So three-way tap, it's important to know the type of three-way tap you have over here. So this one is open every way, every direction, except the one without a little um, arm on it. So it's closed in this direction. So when you want to draw the air out, you have it open through to the syringe. When you want to push it out through this hole, you come back out that way. Um, and there's no opening here, so it's not open. So that way it's closed here. So anyway, it's important to know that because some three-way taps aren't the same. <laughs> so you have to make sure you understand how that three-way tap works that you're using. Um, I don't know that it's closed yet. You could probably start. So no more than a couple of mils negative pressure normally. Yep, it must be almost lunchtime, <laughs> half past four. Yeah. Is that why I'm smiling? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm smiling. I'm happy with the way the surgery went. Uh, of course, we're not finished yet, but everything's going to plan. We found the duct, the ligament that was blocking the esophagus, and we've managed to free that up, and the esophagus has opened up really well. Uh, and in fact, the big dilation in front of it has actually gone down significantly just with the opening up of that, um, that kind of uh, constriction of it. So, you know, we've got a long way to go, but um, 
I'm really happy that we've got a good chance that this dog will improve. The biggest risk now is that the esophagus is still not normal and that he's still at risk of regurgitating or vomiting and aspirating it and getting pneumonia again, which he's already had before. So um, we're going to have to be really vigilant with that. We'll keep using the feeding tube, that'll help. But um, if we can get him through that stage, then, you know, let's hope that he's going to go well. So this is Norton. What are we now? Three days post-op. He's doing pretty well. He's um, not regurgitating anymore. He's still licking. Um, he's still getting fed through his tube. So he's not able to eat by mouth much as he wants to. So every time he gets his food coming to him in the tube, in the syringe, he goes, I want to eat that. I want to lick it. Um, and he tries to forage out stuff um, when he's put down <laughs> on the ground. But... Um, He's managing to, to cope with the stomach tube still pretty well and we're just starting to put on a little bit of weight, which is great. Um, but the main thing is he's um, gradually improving. We have to wait for his esophagus, hopefully, to improve in its function before I can start him eating by mouth. So that might be another two or three weeks or so. But so far, so good. And he's got through the worst of it. So I'll pop him down. You can have a little look at him. Oops, playing on the ground. Yeah, there you go. And have a little look around. What's he doing? Hey. Look at the camera. There you go. Hey. Good boy. He's looking for food. <laughs> you can see how underweight he is. He has to put on quite a bit to catch up.